Are you fired up? Are you ready for another Democratic Party primary debate? No? Well, too bad, because you're getting one anyway. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, the mood in the country, especially among, you know, Democratic Party primary voters, it's just one of a lack of enthusiasm, a lack of energy, because what happened in Iowa was truly just despicable. So, I mean, I think that we are all looking to this debate with a sense of overwhelming dread and just, we don't have the energy for this, but nonetheless, here we are. So this debate will be hosted by ABC News in association with WMUR and Apple News. Um, here's an idea, maybe let's not allow multinational corporations to host our debates, but you know, that's just me, that's just my thoughts. Um, at least CNN isn't hosting it, thank God, because they should not be allowed to host the debate. But I mean, regardless of who's hosting it, like none of us are ready to withstand more shenanigans from the Democratic Party apparatus and DNC. We're just, we're tired. So another debate, it better be great. The candidates better put on a show for us, entertain us, because we need the energy right now more than ever. Now, before I get to the candidate lineup, as well as what I think we need to see from the candidates, I will say this. Every single candidate on that stage should be absolutely unequivocal in their condemnation of that debacle that we saw in Iowa, because that truly was just demoralizing. They all had individuals volunteer for them, dedicate, in some instances, months of their time to get them elected. And um, we all saw how that turned out. It was despicable. So if they are not absolutely unequivocal and loud in their condemnation, I will be disappointed to say the least. And I think they may even alienate individuals. You have to understand that um, we need you to prove that you're a leader and be a leader in this instance and explain or demonstrate rather that you understand how we're feeling. You can read a room. You have your finger on the pulse of America and what we're feeling. And right now we're pissed. Communicate to us that you acknowledge that and understand the anger that we're feeling. Now, in terms of the lineup, we have Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang. Now, I actually think that Andrew Yang's participation in this debate is welcome. Um, after, you know, watching uh, Pete Buttigieg on stage, uh, declaring his victory on Monday night before we saw any of the results, the smugness, like, let's, let's uh, live in the room and bring on someone like Andrew Yang, who, even if I don't personally support him based on his policy positions, he's just a chill dude who I would love to smoke a blunt with someday. Hit me up, Andrew. <laughs> so, I mean, like, look, and, and I'll, just, I'll just put this out into the universe. I will switch my support from Bernie to any other candidate if they call Pete Buttigieg a rat-faced fucker on national television. <laughs> I'm so petty. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but no, like, I think that there's a lot that should be taking place because we just had the first contest and we should see fireworks, um, or at least if these people are playing to win. So in terms of what we should expect for Joe Biden, after coming in uh, fourth place in Iowa, he's hanging on for dear life, and this is his time to go absolutely scorched earth he's got to call out pete with a judge and amy klobuchar and he's got to say look i am the one who is leading both of you don't have a path to the nomination and you're splitting the votes you're allowing bernie sanders to win do you really want to do that you should drop out and unite behind me i mean he's really got to go into this debate guns blazing specifically against pete with judge and amy klobuchar it doesn't make sense for joe biden to, you know, turn his sights towards Bernie Sanders. I mean, he can. But at this point in time, he's got to do some major, like, miracle in trying to unite the moderate wing of the party after Pete Buttigieg just outshined him in Iowa. That's his task. Can he do it? I don't think he's up to it. Uh, with that being said, it is true that he can make the case that Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, they don't have a path to the nomination, whereas he still has that name recognition. He still has that support from, you know, the Democratic Party apparatus, you know, at large. So he can make this case. Will he convincingly do that? Probably not because it's Joe Biden. Now, when it comes to Pete Buttigieg, 
Um, he wants to be the front runner, so he's got to defend himself. He's got to be able to withstand blows, and he has to do it, and uh, do it in a way where he communicates to us that he can, you know, withstand, hold his own really against Donald Trump. Because when uh, Elizabeth Warren was calling him out for his wine cave fundraisers, like there were video clips online that went viral of him, like his hand shaking, like literally the Arthur meme. And this is something that really makes you come off like a psychopath. So you've got to prove to us that you're going to remain calm, cool, and collected against Donald Trump in a general election. Like, prove yourself, all right? You emerged uh, victorious, according to you, in Iowa, even though Bernie Sanders won. And prove your worth now. Will he do it? Um, that depends. Will people give him a pass? That's really the true question. If... Uh, his opponents give him a pass and don't actually go after him? Maybe. So when it comes to Bernie Sanders, if I'm Bernie, I am making the strongest case imaginable for my electability and on that stage, I'm going to demonstrate once and for all that nobody else is capable of taking on Donald Trump. I'm the candidate who can take on Donald Trump. I am the one who can unite the broadest coalition in Iowa. I had an overwhelming amount of young voters. It wasn't even close. Uh, I had the most non-white voters. This is how he makes his case. He's also got to do a lot to convince people that Warren is not the person to go with if you want a progressive to win and you're truly progressive. Now, I think that that's difficult because a lot of Warren supporters, I mean, it seems like ideologically they're not as aligned with Bernie as you would have initially thought. Although, according to, you know, some polls, overall, about half of her supporters seem inclined to support Bernie Sanders as their second choice. He's got to make that case to them currently, and he does that by making this pitch based on electability and building this broad coalition, because this was really Elizabeth Warren's pitch. She was saying, look, I can unite all wings of the party, but she showed that, you know, based on Iowa, at least, she can't do that. It's Bernie. He has the most multicultural, diverse and, you know, multi-generational coalition. So really, it's him. And if you're serious about beating Donald Trump, you've got to go with him. Now, in terms of what to expect from uh, Tom Steyer, I honestly don't know. And I thought hard about this. I mean, he's hanging on for dear life. Um, polls show that he's surprisingly doing well in South Carolina. But really, all he has to do is stand out. I don't necessarily think that he needs to get in to, you know, the, the fights that may take place. He just has to find some way to stand out. And he does that by, I don't know, talking about climate change. I'm just, I'm not sure. Um, he has no real path to the nomination. He performed terribly in Iowa when he is flooding the airwaves with cash. So I'm not sure that there's any path. So at, you know, at best, he can stand out and qualify for the next debate, which I think will be easier now given that the DNC changed the rules to benefit his billionaire counterpart, Mike Bloomberg. Now, when it comes to Amy Klobuchar, she is barely hanging on, and she just needs to position herself as the best moderate replacement of Joe Biden and attack both Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden. If I'm Amy Klobuchar, what I'm saying is, look, Biden underperformed. Pete Buttigieg has no real path to the nomination. I am the moderate you all have to unite behind if you want to win. If you're truly serious about, you know, uh, winning this war against Bernie Sanders and the progressive wing of the party, you have no choice. You've got to unite behind me. Do you think that this this uh, mayor from a small city is going to be able to win? Joe Biden just underperformed the polls. He has, you know, this weakness that is probably telling us a lot, you know, against Donald Trump in a general. I mean, look at look at this. How can we take a chance? You've got to go with me. And I think she's already going to do that because she's been kind of making this case, but she has to be very, very explicit because she can't afford to lose, right? She has to be very direct in saying, don't vote for Pete Buttigieg, don't vote for Joe Biden, you have to vote for me if you're a moderate and you want someone who's pragmatic to win. If she doesn't do this, then I don't know what she's thinking. Like, they have to take shots, no more playing nice. If they don't call each other out by name, if we don't see real fireworks, then they're not playing to win. That's just that. Now, for Elizabeth Warren, um, she has to attack Pete and, you know, uh, take him on. 
and challenge his ability to unite the party. She's not going to win over progressives. That's just the fact because she veered too far to the center uh, in an attempt to court over more moderate voters. So her best hope at this point is making the case for uniter. Now, I don't think that Bernie Sand. No, I don't think that she has the best chance because Bernie truly has demonstrated that he has the best case here when it comes to uniting the party. But she's got to vie for that spot as the alternative to Joe Biden. And she has to take on Pete Buttigieg very directly and make the case for herself and say, look, he can't unite the party. It's me who can unite the party. He is too corrupt. He's too divisive. In fact, Elizabeth Warren, in association with the PCCC, just released the story that is huge. It shows that Pete Buttigieg has a super PAC that he is colluding with. He's directing the way that they should, you know, uh, spend money on his behalf. I mean, she's got to call out the corruption. She's got to call out how this makes him a vulnerability. And if she's really playing to win here, she's saying, look, we saw what Hillary Clinton's corruption did. Trump called her crooked Hillary and it landed. Do we w really want a crooked Wall Street shill who already is appointing people from Goldman Sachs to his campaign to go up against Donald Trump? Of course, he's going to lose. Like, if she really wants to win, she's getting dirty. She's hitting below the bell. She's calling him corrupt. I just don't think Elizabeth Warren has it in her, but if she surprises me, uh, I think it could help her out just as being that alternative to Biden, right? Because this is seemingly going to come down to Bernie Sanders and someone else. So she's got to make sure it comes down to Bernie and her. So that's what she's fighting for. When it comes to Andrew Yang, he needs to go scorched earth on the unfairness of the process and if he really, like, attacks the media, attacks the process, attacks Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, I think that this can land. Like, he's got to call out the DNC on stage. He's got to tell them, look, I was denied access to that last debate, but yet the DNC just changed the rules to allow a billionaire to participate, and I'm not even sure that I'll qualify for that next debate. Is the DNC going to change the rules for me? Like, Andrew Yang... Like, I don't think he realizes how much power he'd have in making that case and calling out the media, you know, basically declaring Pete Buttigieg victorious after, you, you know, the Iowa caucus before we had the results. If Andrew Yang runs on, you know, how corrupt the system is, the Democratic Party apparatus and DNC is, he would be just, he would get a huge boost. He would move into that mid-tier. Because that's what people want to hear currently, and I don't think that Bernie Sanders will explicitly call out the corruption of the, of the DNC, so Andrew Yang has got to pull out some tricks at this debate, right? And if he targets that corruption, he may be able to, you know, outperform individuals like Elizabeth Warren who are starting to slide. Um, he can move himself into that mid-tier but he's got to call out the system. He's an anti-establishment candidate, so he has that, you know, that advantage in what he says about the system. It lands because it's true, right? And Andrew Yang has done a great job at calling out the bias. He called out the MSNBC blackout against his campaign before. So I think that if he does this on a national stage, this is going to land and it's it's going to help him. So that is my expectations, um but as usual, we really don't know what to expect. I'm expecting a complete shit show, like everything with, you know, the DNC and Democratic Party. But we will see if all goes according to plan. Then Bernie Sanders will defend his status as the front runner. Now that, you know, Joe Biden is uh, kind of starting to slide and he proved to everyone that he's not as uh, solid as we thought, as the polls were showing. And really what we're going to see is someone try to move into that I am the alternative to Bernie position. We're going to see a lot of candidates vie for that. Hopefully Bernie will be able to kind of skate by as they all compete to be the anti-Bernie alternative. But we'll just wait and see.